What made you almost actually walk out of work? I used to be a pizza delivery girl. Now, I don't know if you guys remember this, but back around March and April, East Texas had some awful twisters come our way. Guess who worked that night? Yep, me. So the night started out with rain. It was not a big deal, though not the most ideal weather for a walk and back and forth between houses, but it was tolerable. An hour later, the wind started to pick up. Again, just a nuisance. Well, on my last run, the tornado sirens started going off. I was going down an old back road trying to find some woman's house. A tree fell over in front of my car. The tree wasn't big, but it was big enough that I couldn't just go around it. So I got out of my car and attempted to move it. I lost my shoes. I had worn flip-flops that day, unaware of the weather later. These tornadoes literally hit unexpectedly. So I was sitting there without shoes in the rain trying to move this tree. Well, I ended up getting it out of the way. So I drove along until I found the house. I walked up to the door, which had no sort of cover for me to stand under. And I knocked on the door, very loudly. No one answered. I knocked again. Five minutes later, there were no responses. So I yelled, went to the back door, and even called my boss. The boss told me to come back. Well, I was halfway home when I got another call from my boss saying that the people didn't hear me because they were hiding in their basement and that I had to go back and deliver the pizza. So I was annoyed, to say the least. I got to the house, and they were mad. Rudest customers I've ever witnessed. They started cussing at me, telling me that I had horrible customer service, all the while I was standing shoeless, soaking wet, trying really hard not to get their pizza wet, and then they refused to pay for the quote-unquote horrible service. Well, I couldn't do much about it, so I just left angry. When I got back to work, my boss was furious. The power was out. I almost took an hour on that trip because of the tree and the angry customers. And we still had people who wanted pizza. He threatened to fire me for taking so long, saying I was a worthless employee who couldn't do anything right. I honestly didn't think anything of it because, well, overall, it was just a bad night. We had one more delivery, and it turns out it was for the same exact house I just went to. So, of course, I was picked to go. I showed up at their house, and the same couple answered the door. It turns out that their first pizza was too wet for them to eat. So they took the pizza and asked me why I was out in this weather. I almost blew up on them, but instead, I answered calmly and said to give you what you wanted. They slammed the door and told me to leave. I got back in the car and holy hell, I saw a tornado that was about to touch down right in front of me. So I ran for the ditch because I didn't know what to do. And I stayed there. My car got practically obliterated. I stayed in that ditch for about 30 minutes and thank God I was alright. So I drove back to work, shoeless, soaking wet, dirt all over me, glass all in my car because all of the windows broke from the hail. I also have several dents on my car too. So I walk in and I was yelled at for taking so long. I literally told my manager, screw you, and left. Holy moly, this lady should have been employee of the year for this one night alone. I mean, come on, give the girl some credit for going out in tornado weather, moving a felled tree, all without shoes, and then going back and forth to the same house to deliver a friggin' pizza. That better be a pie, at the very least, without pineapples on it, right? Story 2. The cheese conundrum at the grocery store. I got laid off from my first job after college and took a job at a grocery store deli to make ends meet. It was awful, but my co-workers were good people. There was this one soccer mom who came in several times a week to get stuff for her kids and just thought she was a goddamn queen of the castle. She treated every employee like crap, always acted impatient, and complained about everything even though everyone was nice to her. One day, she asked for two pounds of white American cheese, and so I started slicing and told her I would have to split the order, or it wouldn't fit right into one bag. She said, no, don't use paper, just make it fit into one. So I did, and the bag was all swollen and the cheese looked all messed up, just like I said it would. I rang her up, she took the bag, looked at it, looked at me, opened the bag and threw two pounds, about 16 bucks worth of cheese on the floor and stormed off. She later came back and insisted my manager slice her cheese, all the while berating me and calling me incompetent, and my manager incompetent for not having better employees. I came really close to snapping, but afterward my manager told me that I was just doing what she asked, And not to worry about it because the woman was insufferable and always acted like that. So I avoided her from then on. A year later, I got a new job and put in my notice at the deli. I came in for my last day of work and was about halfway through the day when that same woman came in to buy cheese. I asked my manager if I could leave early since it was my last day. She said yes. Then I thanked her for being a good boss and all that and told her I would help one last customer. 
I then suggested she go to the back. She looked confused and then saw the woman and the look on my face, grinned a little and went back to the office. I greeted the woman with a huge grin. Hello, ma'am. How are you this fine afternoon? She replied sharply, I want two pounds of white American cheese and see if you can figure out how to do it right this time since they haven't replaced you yet for some reason. I casually sliced four slices of cheese into the palm of my hand, looked around to make sure no one was watching, leaned across the counter as though I were offering it to her and slung the cheese into her face. It smacked against the center and stuck there, momentarily, until she reached up and flung it away. Her eyes were so big I thought I saw her head go big as well. She started breathing, hard, stammering, trying to figure out what to say. When I interrupted and casually said, I have watched you treat everyone in this place like crap for the last year and a half. Slice your own goddamn cheese, you cow. I hadn't planned on going that far with it, but it happened. She started to yell and scream for a manager, so my manager came out. The woman demanded I be fired on the spot, so I just said, I quit, and skipped out the door. I went back there a month later to see people, and they said the woman still came in for cheese and had stopped giving them crap. They also said she stood way back from the counter and would not approach until her cheese was in a bag. Okay, so this guy, yeah, this guy right here is a hero because even after his last day, that woman changed and stopped giving his former colleagues crap, at least for the cheese. Story three, I got a new job as a credit controller a few years ago. However, we had to do two weeks of training, which was about 100 miles from where the job actually was. I had to drive there alone for the first few days before my new manager asked if it was okay for me to take a new colleague who had started that day as it would be easier for her since she didn't drive. As she was a gorgeous Spanish girl, I immediately said yes. Anyway, a few days into me taking her on my commute to work, we actually got along really well. Unfortunately, I had a girlfriend and was only interested in friendship. She, however, had other plans. Believe me, if I were single, I'd been all over her. She knew I wasn't single but seemed to try really hard to get with me. Towards the end of the second week, we were stuck in traffic on the way back from work. She proceeded to rest her head on my shoulder and said she was tired. Okay, a bit awkward, but no big deal. What was a big deal was her actually making moves. Now, a little action on the M25 in loads of traffic sounds nice, but again, I'm committed to my girlfriend. So I asked her to move over and stopped her in quite a stern manner. Alas, awkward silence for the entire ride home. The next day, I walked into work alone as a girl texted me to say she had called in sick that day. I immediately got pulled into the boss's office and was told that there had been serious allegations against me. I then completely flipped the hell out, partly because it took a lot of self-restraint to reject such a good-looking girl, and partly because I was mad she had told the boss that I had been coming on to her. I explained what happened, told him to screw his job, and walked out. I never heard from any of them again. I assumed she cracked and told the truth eventually because they paid me in full for the two weeks and didn't mention anything about police or disciplinary action. Well, this entire story to me sounds suspicious on all sides. The guy's side, the girl's side, the boss's side. Just completely sus. Story four. I'd been working at this one daycare for three and a half years at minimum wage. I was one of the main teachers in the baby room, not one of the teachers who just get assigned wherever they are needed. I was one of the few reliable people. I rarely called in sick. I was always on time and I always did my job. Meanwhile, we had the newly hired girls making $8 or more. In those three and a half years of making $7.25, I was not given a raise until I hounded them for it. I had to put in a request where I said how much of a raise I would need with recommendation letters from the parents and then wait. I waited four months before they finally got back to me. They, the higher ups, gave me a whole 25 cents for my two and a half years. After talking to my boss about it, she agreed that they should have given me more. She said that she could try and request something better. I never heard another word after that, and I almost quit then. Fast forward to about a year later, and I'm still there. I finally decided to give this whole raise thing another go, except this time. I mentioned in the letter that if a raise was not possible, I would need to find a job that would pay more. I waited through two pay periods and heard nothing from them. Finally, when we got our paychecks, I was still making 25 cents above the minimum wage. I turned in my two weeks notice that day, and then, you'll never believe this, they started offering me the raise. It was incredible to finally be taken seriously. By then, though, I was so fed up with everything that I stuck to my guns and waited out the last two weeks. 
The icing on the cake was that my mom had worked in the infant room for the past 16 years and finally quit to start her own business at home. They lost two of their best employees within two weeks of each other, all because they like to keep their money. After spending four months without a job, I finally found an excellent student worker job, making more than I would have with a raise from the daycare. It feels good, man. Yikes! I can feel the frustration and underappreciation in these stories from way over here. I guess quitting is better late than ever. And on that note, let's take a quick second to hit those like and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. It's not yet too late, you're just right on time, and it always, always helps me out, especially the channel, especially with me giving you more stories. So here's story five. I worked at a Safeway when I was in high school, and it was the most soul-crushing job I've ever had. I worked there for a couple of months and never complained. I almost walked out mid-shift when I got yelled at for skipping my cart shift, which I didn't. I explained to them that I always brought the carts in, as it was the only time I got a reprieve from the crappy customers. I asked if the complaint was about Brian. My name is Ryan, and he said no, but he kept yelling at me. Lo and behold, it turned out it was Brian whom the complaint was about, and I never got an apology, and the write-up was never revoked. I continued for a few weeks and then informed the manager that I wasn't going to be able to work Sundays anymore because I was entering a tutoring program and needed that day and only that day off. He then informed me that the only reason he worked for me was to work on weekends, never mind the fact that I worked almost every weekday in addition to weekends, that I couldn't have that day off and that I would have to make a decision between work and school. Well, since I'm not dumb, I picked school. I was going to finish my shift and then give my two weeks, but then everything just kind of hit me. I hated the job. I hated how it was treated. I hated the way the manager expected a kid to pick a job at Safeway over school. I hated the customers, and I hated most of my coworkers. I put the last bag of groceries in a lady's cart, told her to have a nice day, and walked out the door mid-shift. I didn't tell anyone. I didn't even take my apron off. All I did was go up to the new guy who was working carts, introduce myself, shake his hand, and tell him I was getting the hell out of there. They still scheduled me for about two weeks before they got the picture. Story 6. I worked in a call center troubleshooting email and internet connection issues for various small telcos around the United States. I'd worked there for two years and the amount and variety of work we did were rising steadily. At one point, the company signed a one-month contract with the manufacturer of a video phone device for the hearing impaired. This had nothing to do with troubleshooting, email, or anything else in our job descriptions. Our role was not even to support this device in any way. We were receiving calls from people who were interested in pre-ordering the device. It was not yet released. Nearly every call was from a person with a hearing impairment. In order to communicate over the phone, they had to use a relay service where they would type to an operator. The operator would read what they typed, we would reply to the operator, and the operator would type back to the customer. These calls usually lasted 30 plus minutes in a job where you are pressured to keep your calls at or under 10. It gets worse. Our company was not certified to handle credit card numbers. This meant that we could not actually take payment and submit orders for these people. We took down their information, what products they wanted, and submitted it to the manufacturer. Then we would tell the customer that a representative from the manufacturer would contact them within two weeks to finish a sale. There was nothing about this job that could not be accomplished by a simple form on the manufacturer's website. It would have been much easier for the person ordering, it would have saved my company the hassle, and it would have saved the manufacturer money. When our company decided to make this a full-term contract instead of a month-long one, now is it. Myself and three co-workers who had been there for two years were fuming. We met in the parking lot and just complained about it for an hour. We didn't walk out though. We did, however, find another place that's hiring for more pay. And all four of us were working there the next week. Story 7. I worked for a Glamour Shots in the 90s. I helped launch a store and then worked there as a photographer. We had a manager who was a total jerk. He was married and lived over an hour away from the studio. So he would spend four to five days a week living in a hotel and only go home on weekends. I was the only male working in the studio besides a manager. He would give his favorite girls perks that nobody else received. Some girls never had to work holidays. Some got off any time they wanted. Well, this sucked because as a photographer working in a new studio in a small town, the workload was massive. So many excited country girls wanted their quote-unquote glamour shots. As the only male photographer, I never received any holidays off and was often called to come in and cover for some girl who didn't feel like working today. One of the girls told me that he took her for a ride and then tried to pit her against me by saying I had been talking about her behind her back. Now, we were friends and she knew better and would keep me up on his shenanigans. 
One day I lost it and said I would not be working any more consecutive holidays and that I demanded that all photographers rotate shifts on holidays so nobody gets screwed. He pretended to agree with me and then gave me the very next holiday shift again. When I saw the schedule, I turned to him and said to his face, You are the crappiest human being I have ever had the displeasure to know. He smiled and told me I could leave. I said he couldn't stop me. I did get fired, which was really no loss, but here's the kicker. I knew which girls he was involved with. Some of them were bar girls and couldn't keep a secret to save their lives. I teamed up with another girl and we found a way to inform his wife of his activities. He got me fired and I got him divorced. Screw that guy. Oof, some men, especially ones in positions of power, can really be the worst version of themselves and of the male species when they're surrounded by women. Well, I guess that prick of a manager can have all the women he wants now with that divorce of his. Of course, he's definitely paying for it in alimony. Story 8. I was waiting tables at a local Mexican restaurant. One of my tables had walked out without paying their tab. Ugh. And in the process of doing so, had taken the ticket showing how much they owed them. The restaurant where I worked had a policy where any lost ticket was automatically subject to a $25 fine. Now that these idiots had walked out, I knew I was going to owe the $25, but the cost of the lunch as well. Sadly, we weren't computerized, so there wasn't a log anywhere for how much these people had eaten, but I had a pretty good idea. The owner found me cleaning the table, frantically trying to see if the ticket was anywhere in the mess the people had left behind. He then pulled me into the bar, still in front of people, to find out what was going on. I was honest, told him what happened, and said that I was willing to pay the fine and the cost of the meal out of my tips. That's when this guy started going bonkers on me. He raised his voice and started calling me all kinds of stupid things he could think of. He also accused me of letting the couple walk out with the ticket as a way to screw him over and goddamn right I was going to pay. I was going to pay big time, especially considered what a stupid witch I was. I handed him my ticket book, let him know that no job was worth this level of BS and walked out the door. I was able to find another waitressing job pretty quickly, thank goodness. What I found humorous was that the next day the manager, who liked me, called me at home and begged me to come back and work for them. I told him, hell no. True that, no waitressing job is worth that kind of BS embarrassment with an earshot of customers, the people you're expected to serve. Like, if that were me, I don't know how I could take another person's order without feeling all shy from that kind of treatment from my quote-unquote boss. Story 9 I used to work at IKEA as a cashier and they had a pretty strict no cell phone policy, which was fine. I agreed that it was unprofessional to be on your phone while working. It was early on a Sunday morning and there were zero people even near the checkout line. I'd forgotten to leave my phone in my locker and I realized this as I quickly pulled it out to turn it off so it wouldn't ring while customers were around. The general manager happened to be walking by and she said loudly, you have got to be kidding me. She walked over with her hand out and told me that I either handed my phone over to her or I was fired. This was extra ridiculous because it's not like I was a repeat offender or anything, nor did she ask for an explanation. She literally just saw me standing there with a the phone halfway out of my pocket. I gave her my phone, I could not afford to lose the job at the time, and when she walked away, I called over my cashier manager. She got the phone back for me because the GM was in charge of the entire store, and so I had no clue where my phone would be or when I could find her to get it back. I was so angry the rest of the day. She treated me like I was a naughty middle schooler, not a grown employee. And I'm not even sure it was within her rights to take my property like that. Alright, so if you ever found yourself on the brink of walking out of work, clearly you're not alone. But before you go, stick around for more laughs over on People That Quit Their Jobs in a Hilarious Fashion. How did you do it? Story 4 will have you in stitches. I just, I could not stop laughing. Trust me. Watch it. Listen to it. I'll see you there. And thank you for watching this one.